What's up YouTube? My name's Chad Wright. This video series is meant to be a resource for you guys who are going to go to BUDS, otherwise known as SEAL training. We're going to cover down on how I prepared for BUDS back when I went through with class 278. I was able to make it all the way through training with no issues, never got rolled or any, anything, uh, any issues. So this is going to cover down on everything from how to prepare mentally, uh, how to prepare uh, running and endurance wise, how to prepare for the water, and also the calisthenics portion of your training to get ready to go and do this thing. So hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. We appreciate it. Love you. Enough said. What's up YouTube? This episode is brought to you by our partners at Barbell Apparel. Uh, what do I have on right now? I have got the Ultralight Tech T. This is the tank top version. I've done multiple missions in this shirt uh, from 370 mile bike rides to 250 mile runs. It's an awesome layer that uh, keeps you nice and comfortable. It breathes, it dries, it does everything it needs to do. Uh, that's the Ultralight Tech T. I always pair this up with the uh, Ranger shorts, all right? Green is probably my favorite color in the Ranger shorts. They fit good, they've got big pockets, they're just the right length. They function and do everything that you need them to do from running to lifting um, to getting out and riding a bike, whatever you're doing. It's a very functional, multi-purpose short for you guys to have. So that's the Ranger short. Uh, Barbell makes these videos possible. It uh, allows us to take the time to bring these things to you guys. So if you get anything out of the channel, if you like the channel, go and support the companies that support 3 of 7 Project and this YouTube channel like barbellapparel.com, check them out, get you some, enough said. All right, what's up YouTube? In this segment, we're gonna talk about the second most important part of training or preparing to get ready to go to BUDS, otherwise known as Navy SEAL training. Uh, and that's gonna be the water part, all right? Basically swimming. Now, when I started out and I decided I wanted to get a SEAL contract and go to SEAL training, I had zero experience with swimming. Like my, my swimming experience didn't go past the dog paddle, all right? So I wasn't used to swimming laps. I didn't know any certain strokes, had never spent a ton of time in the water. So this was a big thing for me that I had to get ready for, even just to pass my physical standards test. You guys probably know in order to even get a SEAL contract, you have to pass a physical standards test, and part of that test is a 500 meter swim using either a breaststroke or a combat uh, swimmer side stroke uh, while you're doing the swim, all right? So if you're like me, you're starting out, you can freaking, dog, hopefully you can at least dog paddle or float. All right, that's cool. If you can't do that, just go find something else to do with your life, all right? But as long as you can dog paddle, you need to go to a daggone swimming pool. You need to find somebody to teach you. The breaststroke is what I started out with. My wife, at the time, she was my girlfriend, but she taught me the um, breaststroke, all right? That was before I cut ties with her and went to Bud's. Uh, I just wanted to get her to teach me that breaststroke. And so she taught me the breaststroke. And the reason I started with that is because it's way easier to learn than the side stroke. It's a way less complex. Uh, it's super easy to catch on to, but you can't stay with that. You might be able to pass your PST doing that, but that's about all it's good for. As soon as you get comfortable with the breaststroke and you're able to do some laps, you need to immediately start learning the combat swimmer side stroke. The reason you want to learn that is because that's what you're going to use all throughout SEAL training. You need to be at least generally squared away with your side stroke before you get to BUDS. Now, in pre-BUDS, you're really going to have a lot of help dialing that in. So don't expect to be an Olympic level swimmer. Don't, don't think that you have to have it completely dialed in. You got to have it enough to pass your PST and that's about it. Now, once you get comfortable with that stroke in the pool, you need to quit going to the pool, all right? Because in BUDS, you're not gonna do any of your swims in the pool. All of your timed swims are gonna be in open water, either in the San Diego Bay or in the Pacific Ocean. 
It's a totally different ball game swimming in open water than swimming in the pool. All right. When you go to the pool in buds, it's just going to be for beat down sessions. It's just going to be you treading water with bricks over your head and beehive drills and all this crap. It's going to have nothing to do with actually swimming. It's going to be mostly treading water. Um, so start swimming in open water. You want to get comfortable being in open water. You need to learn how to guide when you're in open water. Obviously in a pool, you can stare down at the line, you know, in your lane and it keeps you in swimming in a straight line. Out here in open water, you got to be able to swim in a straight line without having any reference point underwater to look at. You got to be able to look and pick something out on the horizon and guide to that point. All right, so that's really important. And the other part of being out in open water is you just have to generally get comfortable being in that environment. All right, it's murky. It's not like a swimming pool where you have clear and you can see everything and it's comfy and it's warm. You need to get comfortable in murky water where you can't see anything. Uh, maybe it's, it's cold water. If you can find it, if it's winter time, go out and, and swim in the freaking cold water because all the water in Buds is going to be cold all the time. Even the dang pool stays cold. So you're never going to be in nice warm water. Um, being comfortable in the water, other than learning the strokes and being able to pass that PST, learning how to guide, just generally learning to be comfortable in the water is the other big part of training for buds. How do you learn to be comfortable in the water? You spend more daggone time in the water, all right? Don't go and try to practice all these daggone treading with bricks over, over your head. You may want to practice treading water, all right? Aside from your, your combat swimmer side stroke, practice treading water, get comfortable doing that. But man, you don't have to go over the top. Um, just get comfortable in there, understand you're gonna be in it a lot, get over it, freaking relax, have your stroke dialed in, and you're gonna be good to go. Uh, yeah, like I said, in pre-buds, you're gonna get a lot of practice, you're gonna get this dialed in. Don't stress near as much on this water stuff as you stress on your running. All right, and the reason is because this is more of a, a skill and out here, the swimming part of buds, it's technique, right? That's all it is. And you're not gonna get, if, if you don't do a bunch of swimming before buds, you're not gonna get injured because you didn't do a bunch of swimming. If you don't do a bunch of running before buds, you're gonna get injured because you didn't do a bunch of running and your body wasn't able to make that adaptation. All right, but definitely you got to be comfortable. You got to know your stroke. You got to get out in freaking open water, get out of the pool. Don't worry about swimming with fins on, man. You're going to get to do plenty of that in pre-buds. You take your PST without fins. So do all your swimming, in my opinion, without fins. It's really easy to transition and start using those fins. As long as you've been running, your legs are strong, your bones are strong, your quads are strong. You're going to be able to slide those fins on after you get to pre-buds and then going on to buds and you're going to be able to use those things just fine. Uh, you don't need to practice with those on. So get in the freaking water, learn your strokes, get comfortable. I'd say swim at a minimum of one day a week. All right. If you can swim two or three days a week, if you can fit that in, obviously it ain't going to hurt you but you need to be in the water at least once a week for an hour or so at a time, just getting used to that environment. And that is how I learned to swim. Uh, that's the process I went through. And um, the water is what it is, man. It freaking sucks. You just gotta get over it, learn to live with it, be comfortable in it, don't panic, pass your time swims, and you're gonna be good to go. That's all there is to it. Enough said. And by the way, when I was getting ready to go to Buds, y'all are watching this daggone YouTube thing. We're talking about 07, uh, 06, late 06, 07. We didn't have a bunch of stinking videos like this, man. There was like one video on YouTube 
that demonstrated what the combat swimmer side stroke was. And it was terrible. It was a terrible freaking video. But it was the only one on YouTube. I guarantee you there's freaking 10,000 videos on YouTube now that's going to show you exactly how to do the combat swimmer side stroke and how to tread water, whether you want a scissor kick or use an egg beater. Uh, so go watch those freaking videos. I'm not going to show you that in here. I didn't have that resource. Everything for you now is easier than it was back then. So you have no freaking excuse not to make it through this training, period.